thousands of sights, all pure delights, stretching from here clear to yonder in the wonderful world of chemistry, beginning now. Hello everyone, welcome to the world of chemistry. I'm your hostess, Jackie Clancher, and today we're going to explore the connecting language in the fields of the science, essentially the units we use to measure things. So we're going to start with looking at something called the metric system, referred to more commonly in scientific circles as a system international. Yes, that's French. It is used by essentially everyone worldwide, with the exception, alas, of the United States, Liberia, and Burma. So to be functional in the field of the sciences worldwide, you need to be able to communicate in the units of measurement commonly referred to as the metric system. So where we want to take that is those measurements, those units themselves, and how we measure with them, how we convert them back and forth between the metric system and the English system, i.e. the non-metric system, and finally, how we convert within the metric system from one unit of measurement to another. So let's begin with the basic units of measurement. The metric marvels, meter man, liter liter, super Celsius, and wonder gram. Each unit of measurement within the metric system is related to bigger and smaller units by the power of 10. <laughs> This is a meter stick. It is comprised of decimeters, tenths of meters. A decimeter is 10 centimeters. Two decimeters is 20 centimeters. Three decimeters is 30 centimeters. Decimeters, not so, so commonly used, but it does get used often in such realms as vegetation measurements. They use decimeters in sampling vegetation a prefix being deci and the meter identifying what unit of measurement we're dealing with, a measurement of length. Within that are centimeters. There are 10 centimeters to a decimeter. Centimeters very, very commonly used. And then within the centimeter, millimeters. And again, there are 10 millimeters to one centimeter and 10 centimeters to a decimeter. So the meter stick can be contrasted with a yardstick, which is slightly shorter than a meter stick. A meter stick at 100 centimeters is longer than a traditional yardstick at 36 inches. But we can change that. A meter's just a little longer than a yard. That's not very hard. So let's compare. Meter stick to a yardstick. Hence the need to be able to communicate back and forth between the English system and the metric system so that if something is given to you measured in inches or yards, you can convert it in turn to the metric system. Just one of the goals we hope to accomplish in becoming fluid using the metric system. The system that rules the world! You can also use the metric system to describe measures of mass, okay? Everything has mass. Anything that has matter or is made up of something has mass, weighs something, okay? Units of mass include the kilogram. So you might have heard, at least colloquially, the expression a kilogram of sugar, or maybe you've heard it of something else. A gram, okay? Those would be their most common ones, a kilogram and a gram. You may also have heard milligrams in terms of a certain medication perhaps, or if you've worked within the sciences, you may have used that as well. So, in addition to using the metric system to measure length, we can use it, use it to measure how we discuss mass, kilogram, the gram, and the milligram, milligram. Many things in the United States and elsewhere have both the English system, you'll notice on this, net weight one pound, and the metric system, listed on them. Metric system in this case is 453 grams. So right off the bat, looking at this, you get an idea of a rough conversion factor between grams and pounds. A pound is roughly one half of one kilogram. 
How do we know that? Well, 453 grams is one pound, and a kilogram, which we'll explore in terms of the prefix in just a second, is 1,000 grams. Soon, it is predicted, the whole world will be unified under this easier system of measurement. Although when we think of liquids, we're usually thinking of measuring a volume, what we actually see on the outside gives us some measurement as well of how much things weigh. So for instance, this says 355 milliliters. If this were pure water, 355 milliliters would be equivalent to 355 grams. Hmm. A link between volume and mass. This has got sugar in it and it's also carbonated. It's got a bunch of compressed carbon dioxide gas in it. So we're not gonna get a direct equivalent, but at 355 milliliters, we could tear the weight of the can. That means we get rid of the weight of the can, okay? This isn't entirely scientifically precise because I've switched the cans. And we can measure the mass of this can of soda at 376.79 grams, okay? So one can of soda, roughly, okay? Roughly the same in grams as it is in <laughs> milliliters, the measurement for volume. So 376 grams versus 355 milliliters. So this is 100 milliliters. One of the fantastic things about water is that one gram of water is equal to, one gram of water is the mass of one milliliter of water. And we could prove that mathematically, but first what we're gonna do is just look at that on the scale. 100 milliliters of water, and voila, perfect. Great, so that relationship is gonna come into play later on for us in many instances. The first thing you must realize is that the conversion to metric is not a plot against you. We can also measure volume. And we see this pretty commonly because many things are marked in both the metric system and in the English system. So for instance, we use this soda as an example. It says here 12 fluid ounces, 355 milliliters. Your task now, every time you see something like this, is to start getting comfortable with this communicating language, the metric language that we'll use in the field of the sciences, okay? So 355 milliliters, roughly a little more than a third of a liter. Okay, so this is measured in milliliters. We can also look at something probably a little more common to folks, which is the liter. Many folks have a one liter water bottle that they use when they're hiking or exercising that has 1,000 milliliters in it. It is wider than this, hence it is shorter, but to here would be 1,000 milliliters, which are units of one one thousandth of a liter, so one thousand milliliters to a liter. So a liter would fill up to here. Conversely, we could look at one hundred milliliters. Okay, so if this is 355, the shape's a little bit deceiving, but this is one hundred milliliters. Okay, and that has a name, but we'll get into that in just a minute. We're gonna kinda keep it with some of the basics right now. We can also look at 10 milliliters. Okay, 10 milliliters. So, just to give you a feel for how much each of these volumes are, 10 milliliters, formerly 100 milliliters, and 1,000 milliliters, or one liter. The fantastic thing that makes the metric system a workable system, mathematically and in terms of our comprehension of it is that everything is related to each other through the powers of 10. That cannot be said about the English system. It is much more complicated to manipulate mathematically through the English system than it is through the metric system. Okay, so 
One thing we haven't mentioned that is applicable to both the English system and the metric system, happily, is the units we use for time. Time, happily, is nothing we haven't become well familiar with in our life. The second. That one remains simple. The second in metric is still the same as the second in the English system. Temperature gets a little tricky. We all know we're comfortable with the concept of Fahrenheit to describe how warm or cold it is outside. In the metric system, we actually base it around a standard of degrees Kelvin, but degrees Kelvin is readily translated to something you've certainly heard of, degrees Celsius, okay, through simple addition, and then degrees Celsius in turn can be uh, modified to create degrees Fahrenheit through a little bit of math. I think we should sing. Thousands of sights, all your delights, stretching from here clear to your 